all right this cursor fights once again and this is very quite the same for um not so fantastic not so happy mr hyde i believe that's your name i get things mixed up and then this video is zim seals organs dark tunes Ooh, let's check it out yay if you look around my office you might realize i have kind of a love for dark twisted cartoons same and a lot of that may be because i grew up with a lot of dark twisted cartoons now I'm not talking about the ones like Batman or ones that were meant for older kids. I'm talking about the ones that were meant for little, little kids, and they probably should have been made for little, little kids. And I loved the hell out of them. I enjoyed how much they scared me. Me too. I loved how every time you got through one, you felt a little tougher. Yeah. So I'm doing a series reacting and reviewing them. At least with his cartoons, unlike these horror movies dark that have been going out. And if the dark, twisted tone was warm. Never show these so kids a radar movie. And Mary's I'm sure there have been four kids. It's too fucked up and creepy to be a kid's cartoon. So fun fact, this is the first Invader Zim episode I've ever seen. Wow. Are they all like this? I hope so. Yeah. Dark Harvest was released in April too. Yeah, this one was fucked it's up. It's so dark that it's rumored to have gotten Invader Zim canceled. Magnificent. Let's take a look. So while I didn't see the show growing up, I instantly Wasn't this the last episode two of Invaders and they ever made? Or at least was becoming popular in the mid to late nineties, and uh, we just sort of called it God Comics. You'd see it in stories like Lenore or Johnny the Homicidal Maniac, and that one is the oldest and probably most popular example, and it just so happens to have been created by the guy who created Invader Zim, Jonathan Vasquez. So if you still see comics or storybooks that kind of had this similar style, it wasn't necessarily from Invader Zim, but it was kind of from the same guy, because he goes really, really back in terms of this art style. That mm -hmm. fact is actually from one of his other comics. So if you're not familiar the Halloween with the show, show, that was a good one, too. Um, kind of Invader Zim. Like Herds, the Freaky dogs. shit, There's man. There's a lot of very dark stories. There's a lot of crazy angles and a very distinct dark art style, which is about an alien posing as a kid and Everyone falls for it except for this one kid who's always yeah, trying to Yeah, Dan never, of course, never knew something was up from the get-go. Uh, my organs! You notice not only are a lot of the angles tilted, again, showing you this world doesn't really operate like normal worlds, but even like the normal-looking kids are not very normal-looking kids. They're usually drawn very angular. They're cartoons. They're one eye bigger than the other. They're usually uh, colored very pale. Obviously, the style takes a lot from artists like Tim Burton, who became popular a little before this but while Burton I would have seen Tim Burton make a live action bear in that movie man that'd be awesome story. this also had the dark story oh my sweetly spooch you must don't have sweetly spooches I've got a sweetly spooch yeah she's creepy There's so many ways that joke can be taken feel free to accept them all he had some way of looking inside his body something else that became pretty popular a little before this point but there's certainly uh utilizing is the red sky a lot of darker cartoons even cartoons because it resembles dark, blood because so like of this episode to be a little darker uh they would utilize a red sky uh because it's great contrast again we sort of learned that from uh Kurt's cowardly dog as well these very bright strong colors that can actually i got a few requests for courage of cowardly shadows. dog and i swear i'll, I'll get to it as soon as i possibly can guys in this show but that's a personal preference there is definitely a style to it i just don't really get into the dingy green dingy browns and yellows i actually think it might have looked better if they just made it black and white with occasional bits of color kind of like what they did in sin city but i don't even know if the show i never seen sin city so probably one of the publications you have to have colors so it's it's fine, it's just not my thing. I know a lot of people that love this uh, palette, though. You're in my light. What they're trying to replicate, especially in the establishing shots, either a wide-angle lens or, in this case, most likely a fisheye lens, and you see a lot of directors use this who like to make things look very distorted. Sometimes you can use them a grand <laughs> landscape, but uh, then you have directors like Terry Gilliam who will use them on close-ups that makes their faces look very strange and odd. Uh, Danny DeVito who likes to use these uh, lenses. What the hell well. is that? So they're trying to recreate that uh, here. Again, just kind of give an idea that this world what is that, a little or something? off. A little off. Very off. Ring around the rosy refers to the horrible symptoms of a terrifying disease. That's true. An educational show, too. Uh, disease, which... Look at the way her neck creates. All the designs on these characters are wonderful. It's kind of like Duckman. The shapes just have to connect enough. The eye doesn't 100% have to be on the body. They can just barely be hanging on. As long as there's one line that connects to another, that's all you need. Their eyes, yeah, the ants, this animation is definitely one of a kind. I have had pigeons once. 
Or maybe it was. The willingness to go... Yeah, that last episode of the museum was fucked up, too. You just need some reason that Finn has to go to the nurse. So a bird flies in, lands on his head, teacher says you have head pigeons that send them off. You didn't need that, but it just... That's a wig he has on, right? It's not real hair. When the nurse examines you, she'll notice that you don't have human organs. It reminds me very much of Third Rock. I think the best shows uh, definitely have to focus on the weird people, but they still live in a weird world. And if anything, people feel more normal around the stranger person, but they themselves are still strange. Like, I love shows that do that. Say, you're full of organs, aren't you? Why, yes. Yes, I am. See, that's a great example. If he just said you're full of organs, aren't you, and he just said yes, uh, you know, maybe even looking concerned, that wouldn't be fun. But the fact that he doesn't catch on, he goes, well, he yes, 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 I am. He doesn't understand what he's saying to him, but he's just bursting off. It's a world that you want to be in. It isn't just you want to follow this character. You want to follow this world. You want to see how strange it is. And you Poor want guy's to about to get a bad how man. You can relate to it and how much you can't relate to it. Again, that, that's really part of the fun. Does so he steal his stomach? The dark stuff happens. This is where people are like, man, that was a dark episode. So he starts stealing the organs. Weird how that's the moment, right? Uh, in this? Oh, the, what, what a shot. I mean, that's that's disgusting, shots, man. All the kids and adults watching and going, Watching it, I, I love those moments. I'm kind of shocked they got away with that, honestly. Even on Nickelodeon. The fact that these are children. And then the rats came. It's just not a cartoon, but these are children we're dealing with here. Before the, the first establishing shot they had, but they drew it again, and I can almost assure you, it's out of delight because when I was an illustrator, I used to draw. Uh, pictures like that, and they are so much fun to draw. Getting the really exaggerated, fun curves and just blowing it all off from fortune. They're so much fun. So I, I feel like this is probably a fun show to work on. At least draw. Thousands of them. Dirty, dirty rats. <laughs> That's the good guy. I think a pencil is lodged in my brain. Can I go to the How far in your Is this where Jeffy gets his active from watching fucked up shit like this? To the nurse, but being shoved into his brain is just like, how far? Take the auxiliary hall pass. God, man, did you ever go to one of those schools that had a hall pass that was gigantic? You hate them, right? I, I don't know if that's what that was in reference to, but I, I still relate. Nobody's going to have a hall pass the green kid. Now we know that cowboy is going to come in later, but before we know that, Earth is having that and waving it back and forth, hearing it go move. You could just see that in this world. I think that's what's so clever about this writing. It tricks you into what just seems random. And they got tall past man. Or it can just be random. So it constantly keeps surprising you. He's missing his liver. That's how some kids react to the cafeteria. Food. Oh, he took his that liver, food, not his stomach. And a darker element. If you're just taking the organs, that'd be dark enough, but you replace it with stuff. See, that makes it a lot more, in a strange way, it makes it more creepy, but it makes it more kid friendly too, because it's more silly. You put funny objects replaced inside the person. Oh, it's so, so they fucked up and should not be for kids, later. man. They can play on games that's inside them too. Now, that's incredibly silly, but you really think about it, it's very twisted too. A lot of it relies on how the characters are reacting. As you can see, a lot of the characters react very sick and they're in a lot of pain and it's not like a screaming kind of pain they're just trying to keep it together they don't know what it is it's tormenting so it's funny how this show how did he even take their own. organs did he cut them open or did he rip them out of their fucking mouths <laughs> Look at that, you go from an extreme low angle to an extreme high angle, and they're, they're both wonderful, both just drawn great. I don't feel so good. Hmm. Is that kid dead? From something that's clearly like a kid's gag, like you'd see that in Looney Tunes or something, but then when he falls over and you just see that look of pain and he's not moving, it suddenly becomes dark. You can paralyze. And it's not even ketchup and rice day. One of the great running jokes as well is just how awful this school is. I mean, not only does it look awful, but they constantly mock how terrible the food is, how terrible the education is. So a usual American school. I feel like the show has a lot of things, at least like I would enjoy growing Gats up. Gats seems to be enjoying herself. Okay, this like, is a wrong. Sorry about that, guy. That was disturbing. Switch it with something else like that stuff. Like I don't know. I really like that stuff as a kid. I feel like other kids do too. At least '80s kids love that. He's just 
You should have seen the toys of Broadway. I'm just saying, at least he's playing the when game and being happy is what I meant. Animation is that in animation, the whole thing is about making a character move uh, realistically or convincingly. Uh, and with Invader Zim, because the characters are so exaggerated, they don't have to look that real. And you see, like, when it comes to their insides, I mean, nobody has the same insight, <laughs> well, especially when stuff's removed uh, and switched out. Like, you notice, like, things aren't always where they should be and they don't always line up, and that's fine. It allows a great deal of freedom, and you can sort of really have fun with how exaggerated and how curvy and how sharp and how weird you can make everything inside as well as outside. This has to stop. I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Having him big is already pretty funny because you're used to him being very tiny. But as soon as he opens his mouth and you see the organs inside, come on, that is disgustingly wonderful yeah. and wonderfully disgusting. That, that's, that's it's so fun. It's not for shit like this would scare our kids for life and give them nightmares. And that's such a great idea. It's such an alien idea that, well, not only is he going to have these human parts, but he's going to have, like, six of them. Like, he's going to not only be a human, but, like, the best human. He's going to overcompensate that. that that's such an imaginative... Great not idea. even a horror movie has done shit like this, ever. Look at that shot. I'd already great I even saw one of this fucked up. Like this is a cartoon on Nickelodeon, people. Shot. Like kids were watching this shit. Like I like this because it's becoming less comedic and it's becoming more scary. It is actually building the kind of a climax. It makes the story feel a little larger. Okay, so this is uh, something that's done in animation a lot. It's very tricky, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, it, it's very challenging, though. It's, uh, it looks like the camera is following him, looking up to the ceiling, and then uh, tilts him back down to show him running down the hallway. Now, you have to draw that entire background, because there's no camera really moving. It's just this background that has to be distilled. So if you were to look at this all as one grand thing, it would look very strange. It would kind of mm -hmm. look like maybe a close-up of a wall here, and then suddenly a close-up of a ceiling here, and then the end of a hallway here. So, so it looks very odd, uh, but again, you can really go big with it. You can really have fun distorting it and having fun with the different shapes and images. You can really just blow up. Uh, I thought idea too of like the ceiling tiles falling as the monsters getting close. I wonder if they've done that in a scary film. That's actually not a bad idea. Even the smoke is not very curvy. It's still pointy. They made smoke. Pointy, like that's the kind of strange world. Smoke that's pointy. Like, that's also how engulfed in its style it is. Yeah. Okay. That's a great punch. What a perfect punch line. You're building it up like this is something really scary, really intense. Cut to him just with the cow voice. And what they do, they give him a thermometer. <laughs> this is really, really funny. The other one is just annoying. Fix it. And she still can't talk. This is like a great ending for just all the running jokes coming back. There. Well, you're one of the healthiest little children I've ever seen. God, might be the only cheerful character I've seen in this show so far. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucked up. Perfect ending. I mean, that was like... A dark twisted Looney Tune short. It's like an updated dark twisted Looney Tune short, and uh, it's it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's already a dark show, but that was like, I think it's just the element of taking the organs out. I think that's so eerie to people, and the fact that everyone looks sick in the episode, and like they're suffering. Well, most of them, the girls. It's quite disturbing. Like, everyone can relate to feeling sick, uh, feeling like something's really wrong inside, and in this case, like something is taken away from you. Not only something taken away from you, but something else is put in. Something very natural that shouldn't be there. It's such a primal fear that I think really taps into a lot of people. Like, if I was to guess, uh, I, I wouldn't assume that the people writing this would think like, oh yeah, well this is going to be like the really dark uh, one that everyone remembers. Uh, I think to them it was just another writing day because this stuff is so cartoony and over the top. But I think they tapped into something that really makes people feel uncomfortable. Because everyone yeah. can relate to that feeling 
of being sick. And as I said, visually, of course, like, I, I think most of the episodes, it looks wonderful, it is beautifully odd, and the humor is over the top, and silly, and strange, uh, but it's also kind of demented and twisted. It does a really good job at balancing yeah. both that fun, kitty humor... We didn't have balls back then, then, but now they don't have the balls to make shit like this anymore. And, and just judging from this episode, in my opinion, it never quite goes too far. I think it keeps it just balanced enough. Uh, but I'm sure a lot of people would disagree <laughs> and say this is too dark, too mean spirited, but uh, too gross. Uh, that's my jam, man, and I'm sure it's yours too. So, uh, yeah, it's Invader Zim, man. I want to see more. I got the first season on DVD now, so I need to uh, buy it on DVD too. On yeah, um, I love this cartoon, man, but man, it is messed up, man. I would never show my brother this cartoon. That shit might scare him to death. But yeah, that's the last video I'm going for tonight, you guys. I'm tired. If you guys haven't seen my haul, um, um, I went to a horror convention today again. Um, if you haven't seen that video, check it out. Check out my community tab. I post pictures on there. If you guys don't know, I do have an Instagram and a Facebook. Um, and in case you're interested, thanks for watching, guys. Take care. See you all tomorrow for more videos. Have a good night, night, morning, wherever you guys are, and I'll see you all. In the next video. Peace out. Bye.